Welcome, Nathan. Uh, thanks for coming on to talk about some uh, a very interesting. I hesitate to use the word supergroup for this <laughs> project, even though it kind of is. Right. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining me. Yeah, no problem. It's fun to to be here mm -hmm. and talk about it. I'm always willing to talk about Neil Morse. <laughs> so. <laughs> great, great. And if you guys aren't already uh, familiar with Nathan, he has a fantastic YouTube channel of Nathan on Shuffle. Uh, go and check it out. He puts out uh, a wide variety of uh, videos. Um, you have your Thursday prog updates or um, items like that. Uh, you have your Jana, uh, Jana Reacts. Right. Um, and then uh, every once in a while, you do a really good um, um, review as well. Yes. So, and that's that's why I've got you on board for this one because I know you're a huge Neil Morse fan. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, how did you? I know that we'll probably talk about this a little bit more. Uh, but how do you know about these artists? Um, what were your expectations about this album? Just kind of formulating some of that. Yeah. So I've been a big Neil Morse fan since like back when I was first getting into to prog music basically mm -hmm. so um one of the first artists I discovered on my own after kind of being introduced to the older older prog stuff from my dad yes and Genesis and mm -hmm. all of those artists and I searched my own stuff and came across Transatlantic and led that to Spock's beard and yeah right when I got into his music was right when he left Spock spirit so it's kind <laughs> yeah. of a bummer but <laughs> yeah luckily continued on with a solo career and I've, I've been following that ever since and I've been to a lot of different concerts of his and mm -hmm. been pretty much collecting all of his albums and all that stuff mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and so of course I know Nick DiRgilio from the Spock spirit days as well yeah and Ross Jenny I've always been a big Haken fan as well so I've known Ross and love his recent uh, solo album too mm -hmm. which I think mm -hmm. it's kind of almost in a similar vein like this one is too yeah um yeah. so yeah coming in I was I was excited to hear this one I knew it wouldn't be very proggy you know it'd be mm -hmm. more kind of that singer songwriter <laughs> like folk kind of vibe from what they were describing yeah but I think it's a it provides a good kind of different feel than all of their prog albums I think it's kind of a refreshing listen yeah from my perspective Absolutely. I'm, I'm in the same boat. You know, I uh, discovered Spock's beard first uh, when I was doing a deep dive, much like you, I was introduced to Prague through my dad. You know, he, yeah. my first concert was when he took me to see yes back in the early two thousands. Um, so once I digested all those, uh, yeah, Spock's beard was one of the first along with flower Kings of sure. um, same. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it just like you, um i got into spock's beard around the 2005 maybe 2006 so neil morris had just left and they had just put out yeah. their for like their first two albums post neil um and much like nick you know that's when i got into uh he was with spock's beard and then moved to big big train um sure. and yeah ross obviously with haken um and i remember just devouring haken's catalog like I love, I freaking love Haken. Um, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so when when they announced that the three of them were coming together to create this project, um, I knew that Neil Morse and Nick, uh, I always trip over his last name, uh, DiVergilo is how I pronounce, but I'm probably yeah, butchering Yeah, I think it. it's uh, DiVergilio. DiVergilio, that makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I always trust other people with their pronunciation. Um <laughs> they have very similar singing styles, right? Like mm -hmm. um, he, Nick was um, doing a lot of the backup singing and even frontline singing for Spock's Beard for a little bit. So the two sound very similar. Um, I And Ross is the one that I feel could add a lot more in terms of um, full body aspects okay. of it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, much like you, uh, after Ross's brilliant um, solo project, um, I kind of had a flavor of what this project was going to be, um, even with Neil's past catalog, especially with some of his more acoustic outputs. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I kind of already had a feeling and flavor of what this was going to be. Um, and I know 
everybody that's heard this so far has likened it to like a Crosby, Stills and Nash. Um, yeah, very rich in harmonies, very rich in um, almost like a singer songwriter in that sense. Yeah. Um, so I'm interested, how does this compare to what you thought the album was going to sound like going in and how it eventually turned out after you know listening to it for a couple times? Yeah, I, it was pretty, pretty close in a, a lot of the songs that I heard, you know, I definitely hear that Crosby, Stills and Nash Mm -hmm. kind of vibe, the acoustic kind of driven songs and the three-part harmonies and all of that kind of stuff. So I think it was close, but I do think there was more variety than I was expecting at the outset. Like, just because I think I thought it was going to sound a lot like Neil's solo stuff, like you were saying, but I think there are some input from the other members that I think makes it just, a little bit different especially some of the songs I think Ross kind of wrote for the project and mm-hmm. you know I think it kind of adds a little bit of a of a prog flavor to some of those tracks that yeah. makes it a little interesting so yeah and I'm lo- I'm glad that uh Neil uh because he's worked with so many different projects he knows when to take the spotlight and also how to let the other members shine um, cause I remember when he was doing a lot of different projects in the, like the two thousands, like transatlantic, uh, and at the beginning of flying colors and all those other projects, um, it just kind of felt, felt like another Neil Morse album with different people on it. But I think mm-hmm. with the latest flying colors, third degree, I think it was, um, yeah. and with the more like the later transatlantic albums, he knows how to utilize the talents of the members and allow them to shine very, very bright. And I think he's t- taken that and applied it here. Yeah. 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 I'd agree with that. Yeah. I think like with transatlantic, there's a lot more Roy Stolt influence, like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. moving forward. And uh, yeah, I think I, I can hear that, that he's bringing together these different artists and like letting them kind of have a voice, mm-hmm. um, getting more comfortable with the collaborative nature instead of just like, doing everything himself like he kind of did on those early solo first albums couple of ones yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, what I really wish that they had done a little bit more um, and this is you know getting into a little bit of the critiques of this album um, I do wish that they allowed Ross to take the center stage in terms of his vocals because I only heard him in terms of the center singer um, mm. on two or three tracks uh, okay. the one track of um i always want to say yeah another trip around the sun yeah um as well for uh, as well as um i think it was secondhand suns where they all take a moment on it um those were the only tracks that i really really heard ross outside of the harmonies and into the center um and yeah i wish that they had used him a little bit more um, and that's honestly my only major criticism of this album. Um, my other one, it, it's a little bit of a foil to one of your praises. I do feel like <laughs> a lot of the tracks on here are very similar. Okay. <laughs> I, and I mean that I'm, that's not necessarily a criticism for me. It's more of just like, I do wish that there was a little bit more variety in terms of the sounds that are on here, but because they all sound very unified it does provide a very nice sit down and listen from start to finish you know there's not like a sore thumb track there's nothing that (laughs) really and because of that there's nothing really that stands out for me on this one it does feel like um one of neil morse's more um like one of his acoustic albums where they all kind of i don't want to say bleed together yeah um but every once in a while i was kind of hoping that one of these tracks would transition into like a big prog piece. Um, and we never really got that. And I'm okay with that, but you know, if I were to give like, here's some notes on here, uh, that would be my one. It's like maybe one prog piece. That's my only criticism, yeah. Yeah, no, I I like it. I, I understand where you're coming from. I mean, I think it kind of gives it a cohesive kind of feel that it all has this similar kind of vibe to it. and but I, I can see how it can feel kind of like a little bit, this, like every track's kind of similar and mm-hmm. in the same kind of vein, especially maybe towards the end, I could kind of 
feel that a little bit towards the last like three or four songs maybe Mm -hmm. like it was kind of getting a bit like too much in that and that style maybe and could use a little bit of more variety yeah like I'm trying to um a lot of these tracks felt like um from Neil Morse the the Neil Morse band uh the track Not Afraid Part One yeah um and I was kind of hoping for like a big kind of like what Neil Morse had done with like Bridge Over Troubled Water um taken a traditional very harmonic very um like singer songwriter uh and just kind of built it built it into a progger like a proggy piece um okay. because a lot of these tracks do feel like the um the Neil Morse ballad before the big epic uh but I know yeah. that's not what they set out to do with this album and you know I know that's <laughs> <laughs> I can't fault them for something that they didn't go into the uh the recording studio not wanting to do I think right. I didn't I don't think I contradicted myself with that one <laughs> <laughs> I think I get what you're saying yeah I may <laughs> have but whatever <laughs> yeah you're kind of like you expect based on listening to past Neil Morse albums like you hear these kind of songs kind of sprinkled in but then you hear the bigger prog numbers mm-hmm. as well around mm-hmm. it so it kind of like you're kind of expecting that in some ways just because you as a Neil Morse fan you kind of are used mm-hmm. to hearing that like you hear a song like June or something on a yeah. classic Spock beard but then you get kind of the epics towards the end of of kindness of strangers to balance it out exactly yeah I I've got the bridge across forever track now I'm just waiting for the the um <laughs> the duel with the devil or the stranger in your soul right um, yeah now I'm curious uh is there a track or tracks on this album that you feel stand out that really kind of hit you like right in the good spot yeah my to me the standout track that I I probably like the most is a uh, king for a day mm-hmm. it was one of my favorites because I think it's one of the more like where it does kind of feel a bit more expanded and like there's I think some synth in it it, it gets a little bit more like adventurous in certain parts of the song so mm-hmm. I, kind of a harder rocking kind of element compared to some of the lighter songs that surround it so yeah um I kind of like that one a lot I think it, it was kind of in, written by Ross Jennings if I read that right so yeah I think- it sounds more like a Ross track and like you were saying it having a much more rock and feel it is one of the few tracks that actually utilize the drums uh because yeah. a lot of them the rhythm is mainly in the guitar works um so yeah I was I was kind of well I shouldn't say I was kind of um because all three of them play the guitar so I was wondering a lot of the tracks do have a guitar harmony but I was kind of hoping for a little bit more maybe and I know I'm taking a lot like I'm <laughs> uh pointing out all the negatives uh, but it's just something that was in my, the back of my mind I'm like all three of these guys play the guitar so where's a little bit more of the guitar yeah. works yeah uh but King for a Day has some really nice harmonies within the guitar works as well I think it's one of the few tracks that feature like an electric guitar yeah mm-hmm. that seems right yeah so that I think that helps make it stand out too yeah yeah for sure so yeah. I really like that one. I like Julia as well, which I think mm-hmm. was one of the singles that was released. And I think it's really strong. Yeah. And kind yeah. of perfectly in, is a great example of what I was expecting with the project, but done like really expertly well, just those harmonies and just mm-hmm. the whole sound of it. And the kind of Crosby, Stills and Nash vibe, the kind of jam session kind of at the end that yeah. it kind of goes out on. I like, I like that track a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't know if you've heard it yet, but there is a bonus track um, on streaming services of the alternate version of Julia. Yeah, um, yeah. That's about eight minutes long. And I'm like, oh, here we go. This is I was hoping for more of this in the <laughs> studio yeah. record. Um, but yeah, it goes to show that these guys, um, they know how to write like a good root of a song when they can take a song like Julia have an alternative version be about eight minutes and it still feels very natural. It still feels like, um, like an original piece. Yeah. Yeah. I heard that for the first time when I put on the vinyl record that Mm. I got just this Mm -hmm. week. So that was cool to hear kind of the comparisons and, yeah. And differences between it a little bit more proggy, a little bit more expanded in the alternate take version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. 
think it was written by Ross Jennings and then Neil Morse kind of came in and, and is the one who kind of shortened it a little and maybe added a chorus to it or something to make it a bit more in right. the vein they were hoping for with this album a little bit more accessible and catchy, I think. Mm -hmm. um, which I think works well too, but it's cool to have both, both versions, both sides. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and that's one thing that prog fans always love, you know, um, we love choice and well, what was uh, the transatlantic second uh, whirlwind live uh, more is never enough. Uh, so, yeah. so I feel like that's <laughs> kind of the credo for us prog fans. Sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but jumping off of what you were saying for King for a Day, I do really enjoy the track that follows that, The Secondhand Sun. Yeah. Um, and it does feel like the, it continues that rocking aspect of the, um, the tracks. Yeah. Um, and the thing that I particularly love about The Secondhand Sun is that it has feet, like each band member has a moment to... Um, provide vocal works outside of the harmonies um and i was kind of hoping that more tracks did that but i really like that one and again it's got like that nice rock and feel to it that yeah. i think uh ross uh brought to the table with his influences from like novena and haken um kind of like both nick and neil are uh you know they have that rock and at like background um but i like that uh you know, Ross kind of pushed them a little bit in that sense. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely one of the harder rocking songs. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it was kind of a cool, cool one to put in there to kind of break up some of the more ballad esque kind of songs that you get on some of the other tracks. Especially yeah. like the last last two or more kind of softer ballads to end the I album was, on. Yeah, I was just yeah. going to say that. Yeah, like my guardian and what you leave behind. They're beautiful songs, uh, especially yeah. with what you leave behind. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, yeah, because I did feel in terms of like the lyrical presentation on this record, they kind of hugged very closely to um, kind of the singer songwriter heartfelt love songs, which is fine. Uh, yeah. Like there wasn't a, a, a whole lot that deviated from that, like maybe another trip around the world um, or sorry, another trip around the sun. Right. <laughs> um, but I did like how what you leave behind is it could be interpreted in a lot of different ways. Like it could be the basically talking about the legacy of a person and it's either through your children, through your work. Um, and it's, I really enjoy and appreciate how they're basically saying you as a person, it doesn't matter like what you have. It doesn't matter uh, really what you did. It's basically the impact that you have on others that really defines you. I might be reading into a little bit in that sense, but you <laughs> no, know, I, I appreciate a song that kind of says something like that. Yeah. I, I get the same kind of message out of it too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it makes sense to me. I kind of like the, the vibe of the, that it's a little bit upbeat and kind of hopeful the whole album really mm -hmm. that it's, it, so it's just a really fun listen through yeah. because it's just, you feel positive and happy and kind of uplifted throughout. And there's some good messages and, you know, like you said, a lot of kind of love songs and, mm -hmm. and nice kinds of things, but also like something like a uh, change is going to come has kind of a good message to it as well. Mm -hmm. um, kind of giving hope that there could be change even amongst kind of some of the hardships in life, yeah. um, hard things going on mm -hmm. in the world and whatnot that, you yeah. know, I think that's a good message and something that, is something Neil kind of promotes a lot. So it makes sense that yeah. that comes out on this record. Yeah, absolutely. And it is, it is interesting because it's almost a, um, like a follow-up to, and I'm not a big fan of um, Bob Dylan, but it does feel like yeah. the Bob Dylan's, uh, a, a change is, what is it? Uh, a change is a coming? Something, what is it? <laughs> Sounds familiar. I'm not oh, as man. big on Bob Dylan, but yeah, it's oh, I it's think one you're of his, right. <laughs> it's one of his big ones, and I know people in the comments are shouting at me right now. <laughs> the times are changing. That's the one. Okay, <laughs> um, but it is it is kind of ironic that you know this was a song that was written in the '60s, '70s, and we're still kind of talking about it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know, change is constant. So yeah, right. um, you can basically say that whenever you want to, and you're not going to be wrong. Um, True. 
Yeah. I guess so, it just shows how change can be kind of slow, <laughs> that we're still, <laughs> still need more and more change. <laughs> that's true. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so overall, um, I know that you usually don't rank albums or rate uh, albums, um, but if you were, what, what would you rate this album? Like, how, how are you feeling about this overall? Um, yeah, I would rate it really highly. Okay, um, yeah. I don't really have a, a system to rate mm-hmm. it with, but um, you know, I of course I as the prog fan, I, I kind of prefer the bigger prog albums. So mm-hmm. it probably won't reach the heights of some of my favorite like full-on prog albums from Neil Morse and, and related projects. But um for what it is, I think it's really successful. It's a good kind of breath of fresh air. I I'd mm-hmm. give it like I don't know, four, four out of five or four and a half out of five or something like that. If I was doing some kind of rating. Yeah. Yeah. For me, if I were like, I love to use my rating system. Um, For me, this is one that I would, um, I would probably download this album. Like that would be my official rating of this album. Um, If now I have a question Um, (laughs) in the physical vinyl, is it one disc or two discs? It's two. Yeah. Okay. So see that, that's what kills it for me. <laughs> if it were one disc, 100%, I would pick it up. No yeah. questions asked. And but the fourth side is like a etching. So it's only oh, really okay. on three sides. Okay. So it's yeah. technically three, but still that yeah. kills. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm weird in that. I, I like an album. That's just one record. Um, yeah. Unless it's purposefully done as a double record. Um so I wouldn't pick this one up in physical format, but I would 100% download this one. Okay. So that's where I, that's where I am for this one. Um, I, I would like, this is the kind of album that I'll put on when I need a break from the big epics, the big sounds, um, sure. while still having um, like a good time. Cause I love the more upbeat music that's on it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think for me, obviously, I pick it up in physical (laughs) format because I already have. (laughs) Of course. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of my obsessive collecting of Neil Morse related stuff. I pretty much anytime he releases something, it's like automatic (laughs) (laughs) pre-ordering. Absolutely. (laughs) Oh, boy. Well, thank you so much, Nathan, for coming on and chatting about uh, this fantastic little uh, super group. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. It's a lot of fun. Um. Now, do you think they're going to be putting out another album anytime soon, or do you think this is a one and done thing? Um, that's a good question. Um, it seems they're pretty positive about about it, and it seems like it's getting pretty good reception. So I wouldn't be surprised to see another record from them, but mm. it probably would, might be a while from now, I would guess. I was going to say, I can they see have so many one. other projects and stuff going <laughs> that's on. That's right. <laughs> yeah, because I think Ross is about to record another Novena album. Um, okay, yeah. Nick has like three other groups and Neil just never stop, <laughs> sits still. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, it's possible that it could just be a one time thing, thing or maybe they'll do another record that'll have a different combination of, of people on it. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah. It has a similar vibe, but different musicians. Right. Yeah. I, oh, that would be cool if they had other musicians, like kind of a rotating roster. That'd yeah. Kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, thanks again for coming on. Um, if you haven't already checked out Nathan's channel, go and do so. Uh, I'll link it down below so you don't have to go searching for it. Um, but yeah, is there anything you want to promote? Anything you want to shed light on? Um, no, I think just, (laughs) yeah, visit my channel. I, like you said, I have all kinds of content on there. I try to review most of the notable big prog albums and do kind of news reports for prog stuff that's happening right now and yeah it's kind of a fun time so if anyone wants to join me over there i'd be really grateful so Mm -hmm. excellent uh well thank you all so much for watching uh as always everybody you guys are the best and until next time uh nathan and notes we are out all right